Hello and welcome. This is Dave with another tutorial, this time about material functions. And I know it has been quite a while since the last tutorial, but I had a lot on my plate with my current project split, as you can see here. And if you'd like to know more about the game, please check the uh, links in the description below. Or if you'd like to support me, please do so on Patreon. Okay, so now we're going to talk about material functions. We're going to go through what material functions are, how they can be used, created, and what the benefits are, and some tips and tricks. Okay, so for that, we're going to go into a project to show you. Okay, see you in a second. So for this tutorial, we're going to be using the first person template and make sure to include the starter content. I've already created a little project and in here we have a material called D and this is our showcase for material functions. The basic material is diffuse normal metallic spectral roughness input, nothing too fancy. And here we have an overlay effects that is actually just panning a texture, multiplying it with a height map and some other stuff in between. Using a scalar parameter, we can set it to off and on. And yeah, that's pretty much it. This could be used, for instance, if you have object the player can interact with. This is an effect to show him, hey, you can do something with this object. And now what if? You have 50, 60, 80, whatever objects or material, different materials and you just want to change one part of the overlay effect. Let's set it to 5. Okay, this is better. Now we have to update it for every single material if you just copy pasted it to the other materials. Well, that is kind of, yeah, that kind of blows. So what if you could put all of this into a single node? Well, that would be creating a material function, because a material function is nothing more than a part of a material put into a simple node. And now the benefit of it is, if you update the material function itself, all the materials will be updated. And that's why I want to show you how to, do or how to use material functions, because it's definitely going to save you a lot of time. If you want to copy this very material, there's a link in the description that shows where you can find all the textures and how it's arranged. But for now, we're just going to simply delete the uh, D function because we're going to, well, we've been needing it, but we're going to recreate it for demonstrational purposes. Go into the material functions, delete the old D function in here. And now we're going to really start creating material functions. Right click, go into the materials, textures and material function. I'm going to call it D function again. And we can open it up. We already have an output result, so we're going to need an input. Right click, type an input, and you have a function input. Okay, so now what we have to do is put all of this in between our inputs, right, these three, and to our output, this one. Giving it some space, copy paste in it. And yeah, well, now we can continue. Plug the add into the output, and as we know, the add goes into the base color, so we can rename it to base color. Okay, the first input is a vector 3. Since we're using a texture sample, that, that's great. So we can simply keep the vector 3, we're going to rename it to diff diffuse. And so priority zero is okay. Duplicated control W and the second one we're gonna call height map. And we're gonna set the priority to one. Why do we do that? Because the priority sets the listing of the inputs. So this one will be listed first, this one second. And if we create another one, set it to two, this will be listed third. This one needs to be a scalar, because the usage active is also a scalar parameter. And we're gonna name it scalar. Okay. The first one is the diffuse, and it goes into the add. The second one goes into the one minus. And the very last one goes into the lerp, which controls whether the effect is on or off. Okay, so this looks pretty nice. We're going to save it, go into D and drag in the D function into D, simple drag and drop. 
And now we're going to replace the inputs and outputs. So the texture sample diffuse goes into the diffuse, the hype map, and last but not least the usage active goes into the scaler. Moment of truth, base color, and it's working. Nice. So now we've created our first material function. All of this overlay effect is now in, well, this simple little node. We can easily change in here and it's gonna it's gonna affect the main or all the materials using the material function. To demonstrate, let's say the power will be set to one. Save it. And the effect has changed. Well, this is kind of cool. And last a little tip because as you can see there's no preview in here you can let's say you're gonna copy paste these two plug it in here and set a value zero one and this is simply gonna enable a preview but if you for instance plug in a texture this won't be set as the uh, standard texture so it's only going to be used for the preview, but you don't really need a preview for a material function. Okay, in some cases you may, but most cases you don't. And well, yeah, that's pretty much it about material functions. How you can create them, make sure to name them properly, make sure to uh, set the input type correctly, and the sort priority is a very great tip for the listing. Because as you can see in here, we have the diffuse hype map scaler, if we now set, for instance, the height map to 3, save it, the order has changed. So the listing has changed. Okay, back to uh, 1, save it. Last but not least, let me show you a quick demonstrate. Last but not least, let me give you a quick demonstration of real-world applications. For instance, in Split, I used material functions for tessellation. This is a material, and it's it's still kind of simple. And in here we have the distance-based tessellation node. If we open that up, yeah, this is kind of complex. And imagine all of this being in here, the material would simply blow up. But with a material function, I can change this at any time. It's gonna update every function or every material that uses tessellation, and it's actually it actually looks cleaner because it doesn't blow up. So material functions aren't just for the updating process, but it's also to get clean materials and to not make them blow up too much. Okay, so now that's really gonna do it for material functions. If you have any suggestions or what you'd like to see next, please post a comment and. Next time I'm going to go more into blueprints, it's going to be really cool. And yeah, see you guys next time. Bye.